This is one of the coolest places I've ever been. I'm here with Roland Muskies, who is the principal percussionist for the Dallas Wind Symphony, and we're here in his fabulous studio at Richardson High School where he's percussion coordinator, and all around us are the most amazing things that make lots and lots of noise, yes? Or is yeah. it sound, or is it? Well, it's, it's, it's all of those things, sound and music and noise. Some people will call it noise, you know, other people, uh, will uh, be open-minded enough to think of it as, as music. It's, it's all sounds, and um, you know, I'm sitting behind the drum set, and you can see behind you all kinds of uh, different uh, uh, noisemakers and effects that we use for all different kinds of uh, things in, in a repertoire that we play with the Wind Symphony and here at Richardson High School with our concert bands and percussion ensembles. So, um, But I'm sitting behind the drum set today because um, well, we, you, you've invited me yeah. to speak a little bit about um, the topic of swing, uh, swing drumming, swing music. Uh, the Wind Symphony has an upcoming concert um, in the, in a couple of weeks, uh, and we're going to be playing swing music. So, um, well, I'm going to demonstrate. You're going to tell us what the keys are, so that sure. all of us out here who yeah. love swing uh -huh. may not necessarily know what makes up swing, and and you're the critical part in that. Well. Uh, yeah, I'd like to. Th I'd like to think I. Am. <laughs> it's uh, the, you know the drummer is going to pretty much make or break the 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 feel of swing, and that and that's a key word feel. It, it is a feeling. It's a style that people uh, sense. You were asking me, well, what is the difference between swing music and say rock music and so forth? And, and to put it in words, rock music for the most part kind of evolves around a feel or a style of what we call straight eighth notes. You're going to hear. Things based on kind of a straight eighth note pulse, like so. Um, just a very simple rock beat would be something like. Um Whereas swing is going to be uh, a feel where we take, um, we sort of find an in between groove between the eighth note feel of rock music, the sixteenth note feel of funk music and find something in between that's more of what we would probably call a triplet triplet interpretation. So even though the music might be written in straight eighth, note, eighth notes like this, we what we call swing the rhythm and play that instead like this. And the idea is it's sort of based on a triplet feeling of So you go and take that idea and fancy it up a little bit, and you get like... Um, as swing progressed, then the hi-hat was added, which was a, uh, originally a low instrument, which only played with the foot. Eventually, it was lengthened and heightened so that it could be played with the sticks as well. And so a lot of swing rhythms were then adapted to the hi-hat, not just the snare drum. So you would hear... Okay, combinations of that along with the snare drum. And the bass drum generally in swing is playing a steady beat throughout the whole thing, a quarter note type of pulse, so you hear something like this. And so forth. And then the cymbal is usually the other main component here in swing rhythm, in swing music, um, where you hear the same kind of rhythm that I played here, except the rhythm is shifted over to the cymbal and you hear Um, the drum set that I'm sitting behind here is not what I would call a swing, a drum set that is, that is really set up or, or adapted to swing music. This is a much more contemporary setup. But the fact is that the drum set sort of went through an evolution of something very simple to what then became a, a basis of a bass drum, a snare drum, and just a myriad of contraptions that were added to it, um, things such as cowbells, wood blocks, 
Chinese temple blocks, Chinese symbols, uh, all kinds of sound effects that the drummer would play. All these things were attached in a little rack or con what they called a console that were that was parked over the bass drum. And so you had all kinds of sound effects that you could play, especially if you were playing in uh, in a Broadway show or something like that, playing swing music in an sh early show, and you had a lot of contraptions that you could play, and, and thus the name contra uh, Trap Set, because you had all these contraptions attached. Um, as swing music evolved, the drum set sort of started growing in some areas, but, but also uh, diminishing. Uh, we didn't see so many of the little contraptions anymore, but what you did see was the drum set uh, taking on more drums, more tom-toms. So you'd see a, maybe a, instead of just one little Chinese tom-tom, you'd have uh, what we call the modern tom-tom, maybe one tom-tom here and a tom-tom on the floor. That was, that's kind of your typical or basic drum set uh, for swing. And then a ride cymbal, a crash cymbal, and of course the hi-hat as we know it now um, up at the level where you can play it with a stick. So um, the drum set itself is, like I said, has mushroomed from a very basic setup to a very uh, ornamented setup. Then it got simple again, and now as we've gone through the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, the drum set has, has expanded again. And what, I, what I'm sitting behind right here is kind of my workshop because I do all different kinds of uh, styles of music that I work with. So you see cowbells once again. Uh, you see these conga drums, you see an extra snare drum, extra sound effect cymbals, extra hi-hat cymbals, cowbell over here, and so forth. But um, you would have heard a lot of these sounds back in the early, in the early swing era also. Um, and uh, so that's just kind of the evolution of the drum set. What I'm going to demonstrate for you here, and I'm going to restrict myself to just the components that I would use in a swing band configuration, um, I'm going to play some improvisations on some of the rhythms that were typical of what Gene Krupa played when he was featured in the Benny Goodman Orchestra uh, on the very, very popular tune Sing, 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 which we'll be, we will be uh, closing our concert with in, um, in a couple of weeks with the Dallas Wind Symphony. Um, because Gene Krupa, at, that, at the time that they first recorded this, had been studying African drumming, African rhythms, and so forth, he he kind of based his whole solo on that, even though he was well known for his tremendous snare drum technique, the drum set, the solo itself sort of focuses on a lot of tom-tom work. So you might have heard something like this. tom-tom heavy and kind of had that that driving beat but it it made um, the dancers really want to get up and dance and that's what swing is all about it's really about getting getting people to get up and 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 dance you have to make them feel like they they just can't sit, sit still in their chairs that's what swing music is all about is really making people want to dance <laughs> 